Malachi is a contemporary of Nehemiah, near the end of the 5th century BC, approximately a hundred years after Haggai and Zechariah. When we read about the burden of Malachi in verse 1, it sounds like it might be a heavy message. But what's the first thing God says? I've loved you, says Jehovah. Oh, the burden of love like this, to love the unlovely, a love we are privileged to share with our world too. The people's sullen attitude to the Lord is seen in the seven wherein questions they ask. The Lord's love, they doubted it. The Lord's name, they despised it. The Lord's table, they defiled it. Any old cast off animal would do where God was concerned. What a shame. What should the Lord's portion be? Redeemed Gentiles will give me what I desire if you won't, Jehovah says. Redeemed Gentiles, hearing this, take note. From the rising of the sun even to the going down, my name shall be great among the Gentiles, says the Lord of hosts. It's true. In a thousand languages and dialects today, as the sun moves across the sky, God's people will rise to praise his name. And when they go to sleep, others will rise to carry on the song. Let's make sure we sing our part in the chorus today. Chapter 2, verses 10 and 11 traces the moral order of Israel's decline. Denial of the divine claim on them leads to dealing wickedly with people, and turning from holy living results in collusion with the world. The book concludes with a contrast between the righteous and the wicked. Again, the hope of the coming Messiah is held out as an incentive to Israel, just as the bridegroom's return should be an incentive to us. Notice the nested ideas in chapter 3, verse 1. Malachi, which means my messenger, speaks of sending John, who's also called here my messenger, to prepare the way for the one we know as the Lord Jesus, who's called the messenger of the covenant. Chapter 3 gives us four secrets to revival. First, the secret of the refiner's fire, where we yield to the Lord's purifying ministry in our lives. Then the secret of the changeless Lord, on whom we can depend through every circumstance of life. Third is the secret of the open windows. If we give God what he desires from our lives, he'll lavish his blessings on us in that order. Finally, there is the secret of the long view. Now people think the pompous earth dwellers are happy, gathering trinkets soon to be burned. Meanwhile, the believer's life is considered boring and mournful. But wait till the day God opens his treasures. Then says Malachi, you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Notice the link between Moses and Elijah in chapter 4, the lawgiver and the restorer. They're the same two on Transfiguration Mountain, aren't they? The Old Testament ends as the New Testament does, with a blessing and a curse. God still calls everyone to choose, but his desire for all, seen in verses 2 and 3, is for freedom blessing and victory. And that's our scripture snapshot of the prophecy of Malachi.